Then uh, I started calling because I was getting frightened that maybe accident. Hmm. So I started calling, uh, calling to see uh, their whereabouts. Mm -hmm. Now I learned, I just been informed. Uh -huh. They are both at BNI uh, office at Kokuri Junction. A BNI office at Kokuri Junction. Yes, right now. What are they doing in there? Ah, that they were picked in there. I when they were about to come to work, and they were picked by the gate. By who? By the by BNI people. BNI picked them. Yes, and then I learned there was a. They, they came with a white car, mm -hmm. and police people were well armed, and pushed them in and took them away. So now I don't know their whereabout, but I'm getting information that they're in BNI Kokuri Junction. So I'm appealing to you, the journalists, mm. and I'm, I'm getting some lawyers also to join there and find out what is going on. But, but what's your suspicion? Why has the BNI arrested them? I wouldn't know because the whole of this week, take, 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 my dad didn't respond to anybody mm. and I haven't talked to anybody. I want to know what is going on. Please, I don't want trouble. You don't want trouble? I don't want trouble. Do you think that arrest is in connection with a tip? Well, this is what I'm getting in. Somebody is telling people, some people are saying that it has connection with the tip. But the tip, is it your voice on the tip or not? I will not comment that now, unless this case is off. So what do you want What do you want the BNI to do? I mean, they, they, you think they've not done anything reason they've arrested them? Well, but if they are committing no offense, can they? Come and tell me they are with you. They are in the Maham, brother. They are all not from here. Are you disappointed? Why well, wouldn't I be disappointed? What? Uh, people uh, to go to work and now I hear they are in BNI. For what reason? So, what will be your appeal to government and then the BNI officials? Well, I don't I want, Before I can make any appeal, they must tell me what it arrests them for. The reason for arresting them, I don't know. So they arrested them this very Thursday morning. This morning. Wow. And you want them to be released? Yeah. Why? Well, they are human beings. They have. They have their right. What if they? They didn't commit any offence. What? They, uh, any comment offence to the state or criminal offence? What? Should they arrest them for what? What reason? Were they the ones who recorded the audio? Yes. I don't think so, and I don't know. But they cannot. Do. We don't have any recording here. No, but my phone can record. Mm. Why should I go and get a tape to record? My phone, all these are iPhones. Even though I don't know how to hold it, but they can record. They can. I believe they are record. They can do all the anyway. way. Were you the one who recorded the conversation? No. Why, why should I do that? Delegations are that you you recorded the conversation. The people don't have sense. If they don't they, have sense. If they have sense, they say you recorded the conversation. And I'm saying that if they have sense, if they turn on my telephone calls when they in the tape mm. we think that i'm doing i'm recording now let my personal matter come inside the tape i'm asking you so you wanted one who recorded the tape i don't know anything about any recording if i know crap i wish i don't want to talk about it now you don't want to talk about it now no i'll have a proper time to come up because uh, all this rubbish they are talking i don't want to Good evening, welcome to the show. It's 9.30 and uh, we, have been, we are delayed tonight because we have been doing some news reporting. The MPP has just finished his uh, meeting at the uh, Alisa Hotel, which is not far from us. So we're there to do live reporting. We'll tell you what decision has been taken. The National Council of the New Patriotic Party had been meeting uh, to decide on the presidential aspirant matter. There are 10 presidential aspirants for the MPP and according to their own rules, um, when they have 10 aspirants, they will have a mini congress which is set to occur sometime around August. And uh, the mini Congress will determine uh, how to take five out so that five can go. The disagreement ahead of the Congress tonight was um, about nine of the presidential candidates wrote a petition to the party expressing concern about the conduct of the mini Congress. They uh, wanted the mini Congress to occur at a single location, whether Ashanti region, Greater Accra region, Northern region. They wanted a mini Congress in one place. Uh, they said that it's cheaper for the party and it's easier. Uh, however, the precedence for the party had been that the mini congress occurs in 16 regions. So there are about a thousand people who are going to vote. The main election is going to be uh, about 180,000 people who participate in a main election. But uh, the mini congress has just about 1,000. 
So the decision of the party has been made right now. Not many people liked it. Not many people uh, um, uh, wanted it one way or the other. But at the end of the day, it appears that a unanimity has been achieved. We were live at the uh, um, Alisa Hotel in Accra, and we'll bring you that shortly. Uh, that's our first story. And that's, we had to come back and change over and get ourselves ready. And that's why uh, today's delay was significant. Next is the story about the NPP again. We're going to talk about, uh, those of you who have seen our flyer, we're going to talk about the, the uh, history of the NPP. Canada Japan has been making statements and has created um, uh, some upheavals within the context of the NPP primaries. Uh, people think that the point he made about, uh, against Dr. Baumia, um shouldn't have been made. I saw Kennedy Japan there at the, at the meeting just, just now. You see him in our video when we show it. Uh, we'll analyze that. But to do that, we'll take opportunity and send you... Uh, where's the book? Where did I take the book? The blue book. Please bring it. Uh, we'll, take, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the opportunity of, uh, of the history of the party and, and try and locate why this campaign is important, the campaign to be the MPP's flag bearer. We will start from the UGCC. And a lot of, the, a lot of that is captured in this book. And I'll be talking to you about it. It's a book entitled The Dankwabusia Tradition in the Politics of Ghana. Uh, the Origins, Mission, and Achievement of the New Patriotic Party. It's a book that is written by Kwame Donko Fojuo. And uh, tonight it will be our source book. We'll be dealing with it uh, as we get on the touch screen. And then, of course, we get into the Bugri Nabu story. Now, Bugri Nabu, uh, after our um, story last week, had engaged personally, directly with me. And he has sent me text messages indicating the extent of his role in the uh, so-called leaked uh, tape, which is talking about the IGP and allegations of plotting against the IGP, etc., etc. We had two stories on it here. First of all, explaining that IGPs cannot win election. And secondly, um, um, sort of assessing and uh, ventilating the issues that the police have complained about. Uh, so those, 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 those uh, stories were done in there on our social media page. In response to that, Bugri Nabu asked me personally uh, for a meeting, which I will oblige, I believe, tomorrow. But he sent me a text, which I'll share with you, discussing his role in the whole matter. We have been playing for you a tape that has just come out this evening because the NIB, the National Investigations Bureau, is said to have reported, is said to have arrested some people uh, who work with Bugri Nabu, and he's quite upset and outraged about that, perhaps rightly so. We'll play the tape again, and then we'll show you what he said. And then we'll move to another story where Martin Amido is talking about uh, the Attorney General. We'll, we'll deal with that. And if we have more time, uh, Mikhail will bring us a story on threats and Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a full Thursday, uh, Thursday casual. Good evening, Ghana. Thank you very much for your time, and welcome to the show. Now, though, we take you straight to the Alisa Hotel, where we have just finished this recording about 10 minutes ago. Well, 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 viewers. So we are here. We are always everywhere the story is. This is Alisa Hotel in Accra. It's not far from our office. We're just about to start Good Evening Ghana, but we rush here to get you the story. Now, the MPP have just been meeting, and you'll see a lot of important MPP figures coming out of this place. You'll see them coming out, and um, we might go inside at some point. Um, okay, let's, let's get inside here. So you can see that they, are, they, are, they have met here. So the MPP met here to make two important decisions. Now, after the uh, filing of nominations, they had more than five people, okay? So they had to do a mini voting. The purpose of the National Council meeting that has just ended was to make a decision as to whether, uh, how the mini voting will occur. They have to do a, an electoral college voting to take out five of the ten and have five for the main Congress. Now, the decision to have been made today was, how do you conduct that process? Do you have people voting in 16 regions where they come from, or should we put them together in one place and let them vote? The president has been quite clear. The president has been, in 2014 or so, there was voting in all regions. Nine of the uh, presidential aspirants had indicated that they don't want that to happen. They want everyone to be in the same place for the voting. They had their own reasons for that. We can discuss that later on. Then the National Council had to meet to make that decision. So the General Secretary will be making an announcement very soon about what has happened. But the, but the two uh, processes, the two processes... Where is he? Where is he? Yes, I've spoken with him. He's going to address So, to so where, where is he? The key resolution is now. But where, where do, how do we get there? Where will he do the broadcast from? Alisa Hotel, in front of the hotel. So let's get, let's get, so let's go there. Let's go there. So let's go, let's go to where. Can you take us there? We can pass the back. Uh, we'll pass here. We'll pass here. Yeah. So so. Have you finished? The meeting has finished. All right. 
No, they said the general secretary is going to speak. So we want to know where he will speak from. Well, I cannot. Uh... Yeah, yeah, that's inside. Yeah, quite, yeah, quite. All right. Oh, Frankie, will you tell us something? No, no, no. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, viewers, as you can see, it is an. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Is that chairman boat? That's chairman boat. He's the chairman of Exim. How are you, chairman boat? Good to see you. Good to see. Good to see you, my brother. All right. So we are going inside. Uh, where that way? We are going to see the general secretary, uh, who will be talking. Okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. Come, come, come with me. 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 Uh, oh. There's, there's a lot of shoveling and pushing here as we get into the room to have a, the general secretary speak to the people. Can I come? Can I come, please? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah, come, 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 come. Can we get in? Can we get in? Can we get in? Yeah, that's the deputy chief of staff. You are live on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we, can we get in? Media is coming in. Yeah, so come, come with me, camera. Come with me. Chairman is here. Chairman is here. Yeah, we are reporting. Chairman, it's been a, such a long time. Long time. Long yeah, time, how are brother. you doing? Very well. I, uh, but yeah, it's we'll, only general secretary yes, to talk. Yes, I know that. I know that. I know that. I know that. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's come in here. Uh, let's see whether. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, viewers. Oh, my cameraman. Come, 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 come. All right. So my cameraman is now coming. Phil, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I won't talk to anybody, I'm coming. All right, so keep, keep filming. Uh, so we are now in the Alisa Auditorium, and uh, the General Secretary is here. General Secretary, can you speak at this time? Yes. Or you want? No, we, we are going live, so we have to go. We have a nine o'clock program, so we have to go. General Secretary, congratulations anyway. Uh, how are you? Uh, doing well. Did you have a good meeting? Yes, very successful meeting, as you can see from the, our faces. Everything. Have you made any decisions? Oh, yes. The party has taken a firm decision with respect to the presidential primaries, uh, where we are going to hold it. And also one or two issues that came up, we have been able to resolve. And it's, it's, it was so for the presidential primaries, the mini voting, where would you do it? We are going to do it at the regional level. 16 regions? 16 regions. Same as occurred before? Same as in 2014. Okay. So you still have 10 candidates? Yes, we still have 10 candidates. So at the end of the process, there will be five left? Yes, that's what's going to happen. So is it too late for me? Is it too late for me to file? It's very late. It's very is it too late for Chairman Wun to me to file? Yes, maybe in the next elections we will, we will support Chairman Wun to me to continue. Thank you very much, Justin Kodia. Thank you very much. Chairman. How are you? Uh, very well. I support my general secretary. So All right. I think we are done. A good evening, Ghana. We are done. So let's Hey <laughs> Kalahari is here. Yeah, yesterday we should put you on TV. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So that's Kwabine Japan. Are you satisfied with everything? Well, the party has taken a decision. Yeah. That's it, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's Kwabine Japan. All right. So, so viewers, that's about it. The, the decision has been made. The elections will occur in all uh, 16 regions. Get back on Good Evening Ghana, and we are live. Thank you. Okay, so that was our live reporting. Unexpected live reporting but uh as we were putting ourselves together we thought alisa is just here let's walk there and then do a live report so that's it you heard it first i believe uh on good evening Ghana. it's 20 minutes on top of there at 10 o'clock tomorrow it will be all over on the media but uh, you know that you heard it with us first we have a lot of information to give you tonight bugrin abu says that this and that we're going to share that with you we'll probably make that our first story we'll do the mpp the next story martin amido is another story welcome aboard 20 minutes to 10 here's our first commercial break we have to take this break i'm sorry to break the momentum because when we get into the flow sometimes we forget to take the break and it's the break that pays us uh, so viewers uh, on behalf of nelson mandela and shea guvera who are giving me moral support here's a commercial break we'll be back with the fiery stuff
enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility. Call it luxury, but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility. Do not let aging or infirmity limit you. Get one for your easy vertical mobility at home. It's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building. It's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage. We also have traditional Fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls. Visit Lifts and Elevators Company Limited at Sakumono for your elevators nationwide. For free consultation to call or WhatsApp us on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators. The Elevator People. JA Plant Pool Ghana Limited has introduced the all-new Jetto X70 Plus to the market. Jetto X70 Plus is a modern spacious family SUV with a stylish design, advanced technology and outstanding quality that promises you luxury with affordability. Jetto X70 Plus comes with an exceptional engine warranty of 4 years or 100,000 kilometers, giving you the ultimate peace of mind for years to come. And our dedicated service center at J Plant Pool offers you a wide range of car services and world-class customer support. Be exclusive and outstanding. Get yourself the all-new Jetto X70 Plus. Get in touch with J Plant Pool Ghana Limited on 020-0000-831 or info at jplantpoolgh.com. Visit jplantpoolgh.com for more information. Betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement. A whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life. Where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions. All in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. Yamawa Kwaba, the ban Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories. Aha, dear, a ban of case is here near Wakadia. Ubenya, be a viewer. Care be an anyhow, any new here. Yansu, you were winning before, or best son, we are now. Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories, the Ajume did here. A year twenty four seven oh. Yes, yes, you engine. U break, battery. Yes, it's our tie. Say, ban of car wash, dear. Yeah, well, I bet from Fidibity says Sima, you don't rock car engine, a brand so call engine name. Yes, sign your detailing, which I say, you bet you can't no more be a mow. Yeah, we are, you're some polish, you can't no more come up. And you're going to move, you're some to car batteries, ties, rims, and if you kick a car. Manadum auto fix and accessories, Emma will car and see it that them. Then where you my mouth? You share your chill coin what down soon, and I saw it down who are any KFC boy, any more, a one crime. So open information and answer and be said, yeah, press 024. 651-9369 Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories O kwain so yon kwa pa 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 Sometimes the unexpected happens and the hero falls down in his own story but he needs not stay down for long Cosmopolitan Health Insurance is your trusted health partner whether an individual building a business with cosmopolitan health insurance, your medical care is our concern. For the best health insurance solutions for corporate institutions, groups and associations, families and individuals, choose cosmopolitan health insurance from our over 700 accredited health service providers nationwide. Call us on 0302-540-668 or 0501-678-547 for all your health insurance solutions. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance, your medical care is our concern. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Kwa, when you fear for you now, and kwa the makers in Shira no 
the pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited. I'm up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. to makers is here. This is what I call quintessential immaculatability. She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samai Zongo Junction. I'm the K Pharmacy Dining. Oh, yeah, Fatiman Boga Junction. A Shaman Valco Flat. Kumasi. A Hinema Coco Bain. A Safu Wachi Hospital Junction. Sakradi. A few Kuma. Number nine market. Two and two mom and dad. About the Makers Blessing Attack Program. From 0552 222 253. And 0552 222 254. Terms and conditions apply. The same got the moon I'm a And if you have just joined us, we just finished the MPP story about which there are some text messages coming uh, before we get onto the touch screen and, and get on the highway on the show tonight. Good evening again. Welcome to Good Evening Ghana. Let me start with you, Ella. What are people saying about the uh, MPP story we just did? Thank you, Paul. Um, so Oswa says that the party has spoken and it's final. And um, Nurim says that strate strategically, the surest way to break the eight is allowing Baumia to lead and Alan to be his deputy and Kennedy as chief of staff. That is quite a very detailed work he has given each one of them. Mm -hmm. Anna. Okay. okay, so we have Zul Kifo, um, all the way from Tamale. He says, big ups to the council for the decision that they've taken. Well accepted, as you could clearly see that in their faces. In their faces. Um, he has a hashtag, al Haji Dr. Baumia, next to lead. Barry Kwekujan says, the decision from the NEC is very unfortunate as they have forgotten that they are serving not their own interest. The oppressor must know that imposition is alien to the values of the toil of our party. Kwabena Enchibu Osiaku says, the party is only following precedence. Maxwell Enchi says, that is fantastic. We are indeed voting in all the 16 regions. And he adds a hashtag, Dr. Baumia is the winner. Anastasia. All right, thank you very much. So... From Kwabnen Chibosiaku again, he says, same thing was done in 2014. What do you think makes it wrong this time? People like you, sorry, I don't think I can read that. But then lastly from Zoo Q4, he says, surely the, first to, surely the first to be informed about the meeting before any other media house. Kudos to the Good Evening Ghana team and senior comrade Paul. Lastly, Max said, th that is fantastic. We are voting on all the 16 regions. Dr. Baumia is the winner. To you, Angelo. Yeah, so my actual entry says Dr. Baumia is ready for anywhere they want the delegates to vote. Dr. Baumia is going to win. Kwabina, uh, and yeah, I think that's what we read. And Boam Pong Emmanuel says the party has spoken. Uh, back to you, Paul, if you're ready. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so let me give you a bit of a background. So there's Bugin Abu here. Please take it off. I don't want viewers to read it. I'll come to Bugin Abu in a minute. Take it off. Let me just explain to you the circumstance of the MPP stuff. And then after that, we'll show you the video again. Okay, this, this is a better photograph. This is a historical. All right. So this is the, the story. According to the MPP constitution, uh, when you have more than five delegates, you would have to prune it down to five. The process of doing so is to conduct a mini voting of, uh, of some important people, all the members of parliament of the MPP, that's 137, not 38, 137. The 38th member is an independent candidate, as you know. Uh, all regional chairmen, that's 16. Um, or national council members drawn from across. So, a person like President Kufo would have technically two votes. He's voting as former president, and he's also voting as national council for Mashanti region. President Akufo Ado, but he, won't, he cannot cast two ballots. He can cast one. So he'll tell the people which one he wants to, to use. So President Kufo will cast one vote. Uh, president Akufo Ado is national council eastern region. He's former minister, and he's president. So he has potentially three places to vote, but he can only vote once. Um, I believe Mrs. Aliu Mahama, as a, a, a spouse of former vice president may have a vote. Ministers of state right now would have a vote. Former ministers would have a vote. And then some former appointees to be registered by the party. So, sorry about that. Ten minutes to, 
to 9. It's 10 minutes to 10. So all of these people are going to be voting in that special delegates congress. They are thought to be the seeded group uh, to make the decision to prune it down. And then the five will be presented to the 180,000 people sometime in November. So the, the conversation was about if we vote in several regions, now those who didn't want the votes to happen in all regions, those who wanted the vote to happen in the same place, their argument was that if we have the vote in the same place, uh, then it is easier that a candidate, 10, the 10 candidates can be at that venue and talk to people, sort of a last minute campaigning, you know, like the way Congresses are, they have some speeches, so Baumia will speak, Alan Martin will speak, Kwabene Japan will speak, Boache Jaku will speak, they all speak to the delegates and sort of create a mini Congress. That's what, that's what the nine people who presented the petition wanted. But the party then had to meet tonight at the National Council meeting. It, it, was, it was quite heated, I understand, at the beginning. It was quite heated. Yeah. So then um, uh, they wanted the voting in a single place. The party people, the other view was that the precedent is that we have held the voting in all the communities, in all 16 regions, in polling stations, around 16 regions. In fact, the main election where 189,000 people will be voting will occur in all 16 regions. So if there's a mini voting, they think it should occur in all 16 regions. So these are the two views. Do it in all 16 regions and do it in uh, a single place. But let me tell you the gossip behind it. So this is the gossip. The gossip is that the nine don't want an outcome where it will be said that one candidate won in all 16 regions. They don't want that. They think that will influence the majority of the voting population who are yet to vote in November. They don't want a situation where results are turned out and shows Ashanti region, this candidate won. Eastern region, this candidate won. Western region, this candidate won. Northern region, this candidate won. And it will look like the same candidate has won in all 16 regions. They, they certainly don't want that. They think it will create a lopsided competition. That's, that's their honest view about the matter. But you can also think of what view you have and send a text message to us. I'm just explaining the background to this very crucial meeting and why we had to be there. Now, they want... 1,200 people voted. 600 voted for this person. 400 voted for this person. We don't know which region the 600 came from because at the, at the main Congress, they will not vote in regions. They will just vote uh, 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 afloat like that. So you go and cast your votes. You don't say you're in Ashanti region, you're in Est Western region. You don't say any of those things. So they wanted a situation like that. So the outcome of the mini Congress will show 500 voted for this, 100 voted for that, 50 voted for this, 0 voted for that, 3 voted for that, and then the 5 will emerge. They don't want that other. So the party said, the other group of people said, no way, we are going to do it in all 16 regions. They should try their luck and hope that they can win some region. We don't care. We are poised to win in every region. That's the argument that was coming around. So the party had to hold an emergency national council meeting. And they did. And this is how... Uh, the meeting went. We'll show back the report we did right now, uh, so you can see those of you who have just joined us. Those who have watched it already, you can watch it again. It was quite feisty, isn't it? But this is what happened at the meeting. This is a decision that was taken. Here is our, our coverage of it. Well, 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 viewers. So we are here. We are always everywhere the story is. This is Alisa Hotel in Accra. It's not far from our office. We're just about to start Good Evening Ghana, but we rush here to get you the story. Now, the MPP have just been meeting, and you will see a lot of important MPP figures coming out of this place. You'll see them coming out, and um, we might go inside at some point. Um, okay, let's, let's get inside here. So you can see that they, are, they, are, they have met here. So the MPP met here to make two important decisions. Now, after the uh, filing of nominations, they had more than five people, okay? So they had to do a mini voting. The purpose of the National Council meeting that has just ended was to make a decision as to whether, uh, how the mini voting will occur. They have to do a, an electoral college voting to take out five of the ten and have five for the main Congress. Now, the decision to have been made today was, how do you conduct that process? Do you have people voting in 16 regions where they come from, or should we put them together in one place and let them vote? The precedent has been quite clear. The precedent has been, in 2014 or so, there was voting in all regions. Nine of the uh, presidential aspirants had indicated that they don't want that to happen. They want everyone to be in the same place for the voting. They had their own reasons for that. We can discuss that later on. Then the National Council had to meet to make that decision. So the General Secretary will be making an announcement very soon about what has happened. But the, but the two uh, processes, the two processes...
the media now. So where is he? 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 Where is so let's get let's go so let's go there let's go there. so let's go let's go to where can you take us there uh we'll pass here we'll pass here yeah. so so have you finished the, the meeting has finished all right no they said the general secretary is going to speak so we want to know where he will speak from well, i cannot uh... yeah yeah that's inside the airplane all right oh frankie will you tell us something no, no, no. Okay. No, all right. All right. All right. So, uh, viewers, as you can see, it's December. December perfect, line. perfect, right. perfect. Wait, wait, is that chairman boat? Just chairman boat. He's the chairman of Exim. How are you, chairman boat? Good to see you. Good to see. Good to see you. <laughs> all right. So we are going inside. Uh, where that way? We are going to see the general secretary, uh, who will be talking. Okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. Come, come, come with me. 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 Uh, oh, there's, there's a lot of shoveling and pushing here as we get into the room to have a, the general secretary speak to the people. Can I come? Can I come, please? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, come, 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 come. Can we get in? Can we get in? Can we get in? Yeah, that's the deputy chief of staff. You are live on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we, can we get in? Media is coming in. Yeah, so come, come with me, camera. Come with me. Chairman is here. Chairman is here. Yeah, we are reporting. Chairman, it's been a, such a long time. Long time. Long yeah, time how are brother. you doing? Very well. I, uh, but yeah, it's we'll, the only general secretary yes, to yes, talk. I know that. I know that. I know that. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's come in here. Uh, let's see whether. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, viewers. Oh, my cameraman. Come, 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 come. All right. So my cameraman is now coming. Phil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I won't talk to anybody. I'm coming. All right. So keep keep filming. There. So we are now in the Alisa Auditorium. And uh, the General Secretary is here. General Secretary, can you speak at this time? Yes. Or you want? No, we, we are going live, so we have to go. We have a 9 o'clock program, so we have to go. General Secretary, congratulations anyway. Uh, how are you? Uh, doing well. Did you have a good meeting? Yes, very successful meeting, as you can see from the, our faces. Everybody Have you made any decisions? Oh, yes. The party has taken a firm decision with respect to the presidential primaries, uh, where we are going to hold it. And also one or two issues that came up, we have been able to resolve. And it's, it's, it was so for the presidential primaries, the mini voting, where would you do it? We are going to do it at the regional level. 16 regions? 16 regions. Same as occurred before? Same as in 2014. Okay. So you still have 10 candidates? Yes, we still have 10 candidates. So at the end of the process, there will be five left? Yes, that's what's going to happen. So is it too late for me? Is it too late for me to file? It's very late. It's very late. Is it too late for Chairman Wun to me to file? Yes, maybe in the next elections, we will, we will support Chairman Wun to me to continue. Thank you very much, Justin Kodia. Thank you very much. Chairman. How are you? Uh, very well. I support my general secretary, so. All right. I think we are done. Uh, good evening, Ghana. We are done, so let's... Hey! <laughs> Kalahari is here. Yeah, yesterday we should put you on TV. That's what I hear. Yeah, it was good. Uh, so that's Kwabene Japan. Are you satisfied with everything? Well, the party has taken a decision. Yeah. That's it, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's Kwabene Japan. All right. So, so viewers, that's about it. The, the decision has been made. The elections will occur in all uh, 16 regions. Get back on Good Evening Ghana, and we are live. Thank you. Viewers, do you, do you know that in the heat of the broadcast, I didn't see Kennedy Japan. I didn't see him. I just saw him when we were showing the video. Uh, so please tell him I said hi. Uh, good evening. If he's still at Alisa, uh, when I close, we're going to have a drink together. But I didn't, I didn't see him. I was just watching the video. I said, oh, that's Kennedy Japan. And uh, my cameraman was telling me yeah, he was drawing my attention to, to look at him. But I really should have interviewed him. I'm sorry about that, viewers. I feel sorry for myself, actually. 10 o'clock, and this is Good Evening Ghana, and it's live. Let's get to the Bugri Nabu story. Uh, and then we will continue with the MPP story. So, uh, so you know the Bugri Nabu story, don't you? Uh, we did a broadcast here, the leak tape, and we alleged that uh, on the tape there's Bugri Nabu, and there's two police officers. 
Uh, so we published that, and then we did two stories about the IGP. We explained that from our perspective, we don't think an IGP can do anything to help a party to win. We gave some historical basis for it. Peter Namfuri's role in 2000, where everyone thought Peter Namfuri was an NDC person, but the NDC lost. In 2008, Patrick Achampa was the IGP. Everyone thought he was an MPP person, but the MPP lost the election in 2008 when he was IGP. The situation in Asin North was created, apparently, from the MPP perspective by a, girl, a guy called Suraj. Now, uh, uh, C.O.P. Suraj, I believe, and uh, C.O.P. Suraj, in his historical work as policeman, was A.D. come to Aliu Mahama. So if people criticize Dan Parry that he was his NDC because he was A.D. come to Mills as vice president, Suraj was A.D. come to Aliu Mahama. Therefore, would you say Suraj was MPP? If Suraj was MPP, how come then he was the focus of the MPP's complaint? So we did that story. And then we also talked about the complaints that the police people have been telling us about the role they have. So... I was, I was sitting around when I got a text on my phone and it was Bugri Nabu. This is what he said. My name is Chief Daniel Bugri Nabu, the paramount chief of... Uh, Nant oh, is it, does it concern? Okay, yeah. So let me, let me do it this way. Now, this is how the text looked like. We just cleaned up his number so people don't start calling him. It says, my name is Chief Daniel Bugri Nabu, the paramount chief of Nantong traditional area in the northeast region. My attention has been drawn to a program you claim I was paid by the IGP to record another officer. I want you to kindly retract that statement because there is nothing like that. You should have called to listen to me before doing that. All the same, I am not the one who recorded the tape. And I don't know who did the recording. I want you to retract the statement you made. I know you have nothing personal against me. So I do. Thank you. <laughs> that was a text. So when I read it, I said, hey. Okay. So I forwarded it to my people. I forwarded it to my team. I said, this is Bugri Nabu texting me about this. What do we do? And so I called. And I said, Chief, Bugri Nabu, this is Paul Adamo. She said, oh, but, but Mr. Paul, why? You went on your TV and you, you are making me pass a... I didn't record anything. I don't do that. Why are you saying I recorded? Then I said, Chief, it's a so-so and so person who told me that you recorded. Then he said, ah, he's the one who recorded. It is him. It's not me. It is him. I said, are you sure? He said you recorded it. He said, ah, you see how human beings are? So I was, I was listening to him carefully. I said, Chief, don't worry. I'm your son. So tell me what to do. He said, where are you? I said, I'm abroad. When are you coming back? I said, I'll be in Ghana on Thursday. He said, okay, Friday, come and see me. Will you come with Andy? I said, yes, I'll come with Andy. I, I know who Andy is. You don't need to know who Andy is. I said, I'll come with Andy. He said, come, do you know my office? I said, no. He said, oh, Metro, where you used to be at Laboni? I'm not far from there, near the mosque. He said, I'm not far. I said, but as the uh, Cantonese police station, Osu police station, he said, you are right. So please, come, let's talk. And I want you to go back on your TV and retract. I, I didn't record anything. I, I don't do that. So that was Bugin Abu. Just for the avoidance of doubt, we'll get a text message again, and then we'll show you the tape that has just come out this evening. That has nothing to do with us, but we saw it on social media. We thought it's useful for the story. Bugin Abu granted an interview to some journalist. Uh, accord, according to the story, it is, the interview was in reaction to the National Investigations Bureau having picked up two of Bugin Abu's people. So again, this is what Bugin Abu said. My name is Chief Daniel Bugin Abu, the paramount chief of Na, uh, Namog traditional area in the northeast region my attention has been drawn to a program you claim i was paid by the igp to record another officer i want you to kindly oh it's going to come back okay i want you to kindly retract that statement because there's nothing like that he says you should have called to listen to me before doing that all the same i am not the one who recorded the tape and i don't know who did the recording I want you to retract the statement you made. I know you have nothing personal against me, so I do. Thank you. Okay, so that was Bugin Abu. Uh, what do we do? Should we uh, go ahead and retract? Are we retracting? Well, we are publishing his side of the story, which is what the obligation on us is to do, is to give equal prominence to his side of the story. That's what I've just done. But here is a tip. It's just two and a half minutes long of what Bugin Abu has been telling some journalists about the situation. This is it. Well, this morning, mm -hmm. we took the lead that we were going to work. My special uh, personal aid. What's his name? SK. SK. Yes. Okay. 
and then my reception mm -hmm. also called a queer. Okay. We left that work going to work. And uh, I came to the office. I can't see my special aid. And then I can't see my reception. Then uh, I started calling because I was getting frightened that maybe accident. Hmm. So I started calling, uh, calling to see uh, their whereabouts. Mm -hmm. Now I learned, I just been informed. Uh -huh. They are both at BNI uh, office at Kokuri Junction. A BNI office at Kokuri Junction. Yes, right now. What are they doing in there? Ah, that they were picked in there. I wonder they were about to come to work, and they were picked by the gate. By who? But the uh, BNI people. BNI picked them. Yes, and then I learned there was a. They, they came with a white car, mm -hmm. and police people were well armed, and pushed them in and took them away. So now I don't know they are worried about, but I'm getting information that they are in BNI, corporate junction. So I'm appealing to you, the journalists, mm. and I'm, I'm getting some lawyers also to join there and find out what is going on. Why? But what's your suspicion? Why has the BNI arrested them? I wouldn't know because the whole of this week, take, 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 my dad didn't respond to anybody hmm. and I haven't talked to anybody. I want to know what is going on. Please, I don't want trouble. You don't want trouble? I don't want trouble. Do you think that arrest is in connection with the tape? Well, this is what I'm getting. Somebody is telling people, some people are saying that it has connection with the tape but the tape is it your voice on the tape or not i will not comment that now unless this case is off so what do you want what do you want the bni to do i mean they, they, you think they've not done anything reason they've arrested them well but if they are committing no offense can they come and tell me they are with you they are in the mom brother they are all not from here are you disappointed why well, won't i be disappointed what are people uh, to go to work and now I hear the idea For what reason? So what will be your appeal to government and then the BNI officials? Well, I don't I, well, before I can make any appeal, they must tell me what they arrest them for. The reason for arresting them, I don't know. So they arrested them this very Thursday morning? This morning. Wow. And you want them to be released? Yeah, why? Well, they are human beings. They, they, they have their right. What did they? They didn't come in no offense. What? They, uh, any common offense to the state or criminal from what should they arrest them for what what is it were they the ones who recorded the audio yes i don't think so and i don't know but they cannot do we don't have any recording here nobody my phone can record mm. why should i go and get a tape to record my phone all these are iphones even though i don't know how to hold it but they can record they can I believe they are recorded, they can do all the work. Were you the one who recorded the conversation? No, why would I do, do that? The allegations are that you, you recorded the conversation. The, the people don't have sense. If they don't they, have sense? If they have sense. They say you recorded the conversation. And I'm saying that if they have sense. If they turn on my telephone calls, when they, if they take, mm. you think that I'm doing, I'm recording now, let my personal matter come inside the tape. I'm asking you. So you're one of the ones who recorded the tape? I don't know anything about any recording. If I know crap, I, I, I don't want to talk about it now. You don't want to talk about it now? No. I'll have a proper time to come up because uh, all this rubbish they are talking, I don't want to. Nine minutes past 10 o'clock. Did you get a certain sense in something he said? He said if he recorded it, his personal matter will not be in it. But that's an interesting angle for me. I think the reporter didn't quite see it. It's a very interesting angle. I'll share with you viewers why right now. Bugri says that if I did the recording, why will my personal matter be in it? That's, that's interesting. That, that's clear. If I did a recording and there's something about me, I'll take it out before I publish it. Okay. Now, the leak tape that we heard, there's nothing about Bugri Nabo on it. I'm hearing from other sources that, in fact, there was something also about the Attorney General in the tape that, that is not part of the leak tape. So the leak tape is an edited version of the conversation, seemingly obvious. If Bugri Nabu says that his part was in it, but in the part that was leaked to the public, that part was taken out, it points back to him. Because it, it will be, and I'm alleging it, I have to put that on record, it will be that because it was he who recorded, or he who 
leaked it, published it. He took his side out. Either it was he who recorded, or he who published, or the people who recorded and the people who published are working in concert with him. That's why they will take his part out. Because the part of the leaked tape that was published was all about uh, um, uh, political, somebody says that, uh, uh, IGP is political, he's supporting NDC, and that they should change the IGP, and he's not treating police well. All of that was what was published. A lot of that was published. Bugri Nabu's part is not on the tape, but he says in this, in this interview that if he recorded, why would he put his personal matter out there? But that personal matter, we didn't hear it. It's not on the tape. So the people who published the tape or who leaked the tape, they must have taken out the Bugri Nabu parts. What is the interest in taking out Bugin Abu part? It's either it is Bugin Abu himself who did it, or the people who did it are working in concert with him. But that's not the last we'll hear of this tape. A lot more of the tape will be coming. Let's get on with the show. 11 minutes past 10 o'clock. This is Good Evening Ghana again. Let's see what text messages people have about the council meeting. Uh, yeah, I have one that I'd like to read. It's from one of those people who is texting us from the United States of America. And because people spend their time out of the country watching this program, it's always important for us to pamper them, isn't it? Okay, except that they will have to be full Ghanaians if they want to be members of parliament. We can't tolerate that you are half Ghanaian and you want to be a member of parliament. We like you to watch Good Evening Ghana, but when you want to be a member of parliament, be full Ghanaian, please. Okay, Let's, and there are many people who have, been, who have done that. Dr. Osei Duchum, the education minister, was in America all the time. He filed for, for primaries and he was a full Ghanaian. Okay, uh, yes, uh, that reminds me of Dr. Indum. I have to pay tribute to him, so Indum's story is coming up. This is what the person says. He says, Paul... The factors that influenced decentralization level of 2014 superdelegates conference were that the party was in opposition and has inadequate resources to organize a central election. The decision was welcomed by many party members, even though it was, challenging, it was challenges prone and did not offer the best approach to ensuing well-coordinated. To ensuing well-coordinated, I don't get that well. Centralized election will ensure the following advantages which were lacking in 2014 special uh, electoral college. Number one, proper supervision by all aspirants. Well, I, proper, I, don't, I don't agree with you here, boss, because proper supervision by all aspirants means what? In the main election, it will run in 275 constituencies and uh, over 20,000 polling stations. Will the aspirants have enough people to do proper supervision on that occasion? If they can do proper supervision on that occasion, surely they should be able to do supervision now. That's why you're an aspirant. It comes with a lot of responsibility. It comes with a lot of committal of resources because you want to be president of Ghana and there are 30 million people in Ghana. You want to be the number one. So you must be ready for this. I, I, I differ with your first point. It says, the second point, the integrity of the election outcome. I'm not sure why an election that is occurring in 16 regions will suffer an integrity deficit. In the main election, it's occurring in 38,000 polling stations, and we don't have an integrity deficit. The Electoral Commission that has been conducting that election will also conduct this election. Why are we worried that there could be an integrity deficit? I'm not sure about that. Okay, number three, he says, operational efficiency and strategic effectiveness. It's very similar to second point, but I'm not, I'm not so sure. Okay, uh, party cohesion and unity of purpose, among other benefits. Party cohesion? I went to Alisa Hotel. I thought I saw uh, significant uh, party cohesion, didn't I? Okay. Uh, Leviticus Powers from Kaswa says, Good evening. The party has spoken well. Uh, Dr. Baumia, all the way. Honorable MP and Minister Mavis Hawakumsin, good evening to you too. Uh, all right. So we read that message. Okay. Let's see what you guys have now. Let me start with you, Ella. All right. Thank you, Paul. Um, so Baba Chairman from Tamale says, Prosperity wouldn't forgive any of these contenders whose actions or inactions would cause the NPP in the 2024 elections. They need to be careful of their utterances. I am very much worried as a communicator and a member of the NPP. Atta Bernard says, as predicted, trouble for the NPP. I predicted trouble for the party on the day Kennedy and Japan decided to contest. If he wins, the media and Anas would gang up against him due to his past utterances. Therefore, it will be difficult for him to win in the general elections. If we want to break the eight, he is not the candidate. And lastly, Alex says, if candidates feel like they are being supported by the delegates, then there's no problem in vote, voting being happening or taking place at every region, even if it happens in Germany or Hamburg. Okay, coming from James Jani, he says, NPP, as a formidable political party with properly laid down structures, will always follow its procedures in conducting its affairs. Every loyal party member, whether contesting for flag bearership position or a messenger position, will have to play by the rules, nothing more and nothing less. 
Junior Akbar from Tamale says the party has given clear directives, so we must all follow it. DMB all the way. Dr. Baumia must be our flag bearer. Maxwell Entry says, I think the nine candidates are weak and old because they can't go to all the 16 regions to campaign, which is why they want one place for voting. Harrison Jenfi says the party's position is in bad faith. Think of how to unite the rank and file, particularly the aspirant, just to break the eight. If indeed we really need to break the eight and save Ghana from the incompetent JM who is lazing his boot to ascend to the presidency for the second time. And lastly, Beryl Makwekujan. The silent majority will vote wisely to prevent MPP from going into opposition. Alan Tramantin is a party savior, and nothing can stop him from winning the flag Barashi praise and break the eight. Anastasia. Okay, so from Chairman Tamale, he says, The leadership of the MPP must be firm in the decisions they take between now and the presidential primaries. The unity of the party must at all times be paramount and cardinal to all, and nobody must be allowed to stampede the rules of the party. From an account called Diaspora MPP Grassroots, they say, Paul, good evening. We in the Diaspora support the decision of the National Council. Whatever decision and strategy that will help us break the AIDS is what we in Diaspora support. Let all delegates remember that our core mandate is to retire the incompetent one in 2024, and it's only Dr. Baumia who can do the magic. Lastly, from, lastly from Yusuf, he says, Good evening, Apostle Paul. We, Team DMB, the signal is very strong and we are very focused on protecting the gain we have made as a party. Centralized or decentralized voting, DMB will still defeat all of them to you, Angelo. Okay, now I think I'll, I'll take over uh, immediately and do some text messages so we can move on. Now, this is a very important one and it's uh, coming from Togbe, uh, Ingori Fiaga. He says, no, Paul, you did not listen to the whole tape. The one that is on Twitter has someone rang him and he and the person spoke in Dagbani. Perhaps that's what he meant about his personal issues in the conversation. For that, I think Bugri Nabu may be right. Okay, so I, I, I concede. I concede to that. Uh, I probably didn't listen to the whole tape. Uh, this is very important. He says in the tape, they spoke in Dagbani. So I'm sure this person understands Dagbani. So he knows that the conversation was personal. And that's what Bugri Nabu is referring to. All right, so that, that, that's it. Uh, another one is asking me a question. He says he's writing to us from New York. He says, watching you live from the State Island, New York. Uh, so Paul, are you going to honor the invitation by Bugri Nabu? Of course I will. And Bugri Nabu is my father. He's older than me. Uh, so he calls me to come. I shall. Uh, the only reason that inhibited me was that I, I wasn't available. But surely tomorrow I'll be around. So I'll go and look for him after prayers. Uh, as we, as we, we look for our Muslim friends. That's how we say it on Friday. After prayers. Okay. So I'll see Bugin Abu then. All right. Let's move on to the MPP story. But before then, I'd like to, I'd like to look at this. Uh, what does it say? Businessman and politician Pakwesi Indum has been granted the approval by the Supreme Court to challenge the license revocation of the GN Bank at the High Court. The license of GN Bank, which operated under the Group Indum brand, the GN brand, uh, was among those revoked during the banking sector cleanup exercise in 2018. Supreme Court clears Indum. And I, I like this story because I like the fighting spirit of Dr. Indum. You know, he's, he's done well. He, he stud studied in St. Augustine's, went to America, built his empire, worked with Deloitte Touche Tomato. Uh, came back and then became a minister of energy. He was instrumental in the foundation that was laid to find petroleum in 2007. Uh, Indum later worked at the public sector reform. Indum was also part of the uh, Millennium Challenge account number one. He represented Ghana in all of the negotiations. The, the loan that has given us the N1 road for those in Accra who know it. Uh, so uh, Indum is somebody that we all used to look up to. Personally, I had a personal relationship with him for one reason. In 2001, this is an interesting story, March 2001, uh, uh, when I got in touch with Talal Fatal to start this program, uh, I had just come from, from the UK at the time, I was still in school, and then uh, we had to do a program, I thought we should call it News Nights, Talal thought we should call it Good Evening Ghana, so we called it Good Evening Ghana. So um, we, we had to present a program for day one. When we started to set out the program, we didn't know how it was going to go. So Talal said, let's start at 7 o'clock and do it for 15 minutes. At that time, Metro was not doing news at all. So let's start at 7 o'clock and do it for 15 minutes and see what happened. Eventually, we started the program at 7.40. Very awkward time. And the program went on till 10 o'clock. 
And when we signed off, we were all clapping and celebrating because we thought we had started a very good thing. Yeah, we knew that God was with us and God is still with us. So we know that we started a good thing. But we were surprised about the outcome of day one. When we opened the phone lines, people kept calling and, and Talal was the producer. He was edging me, go on, go on, go on. Pakwe Sindum was the guest on that show. He and, uh, unfortunately, he passed, uh, uh, Edward Salia. But Pakwe Sindum was a guest. And uh, I knew Pakwe Sindum was a member of parliament. And he got Salia to come. I, I knew Salia, but I didn't know him that well. So it was Pakwe Sindum who actually produced the first edition of Good Evening Ghana for us. I went to his house. And I said, Doc, we are starting a new TV program. He knew me from my report of Joy FM election 2000. He knew me. Uh, so I said, we are starting a new program on Metro TV. I'm going to be hosting it. He said, I'm going to host the program. I said, yes. He said, but uh, what are you going to call it? I said, Good Evening Ghana. I said, well, that's a good name. He said, but are you going to do it by yourself? I said, yes. He said, hey, Paul, how old are you? I said, I'm 20-something. <laughs> you know? He looked at me again. He said, oh, but you can do it. It still rings in my mind. Indum told me, but you can do it. After he asked me, how old are you? I said, I'm 20-something. He said, oh, but you can do it. And that has spared me on. I have a very personal attachment to Dr. Indum. Because of that, he told me that, but you can. This was in his house where he still lives when he's in Ghana at, at Northridge. He said, oh, but you can do it. And he said, so what do you want me to do? And I said, will you be a guest on the program? He said, oh, of course. And then he called his wife and said, hey, I'm going to be a guest on Paul's new TV show. His wife came down and said, I'm going to have a new TV show. I said, yeah. I said, where? I said, Metro TV. He said, well, Metro TV, they don't do news. So they're not just entertainment and sports. I said, well, but they are starting news now, you know. So I have, I have a personal attachment to Dr. Hindu. And when I'm in Elmina, I stay in his hotel. And, you know, when Kamala was alive, we we'll go and see him. And we have beautiful chats with him. He's very, very big brain. Somehow in 2008, I wasn't too sure about his campaign. And I used to argue with him a lot. I used to tell Dr. Hindu, you're not going to win this thing. You're just going to waste somebody's time. Nana Kufando may win this election. But if you are doing this to your campaign, you're going to get one, three, two percent. I'm going to take it from him. He said, oh, you want Nana Kufando to win? I said, well, I think so. He said, no, no, we are going to win. You people don't believe the CPP. For the first time, the CPP is going to win. So he will invite me to a campaign a press conference. I wouldn't attend. And he'll be quite unhappy. He said, ah, I called you. You didn't come. Why? I said, oh, Doc, this is your campaign. And he says, okay, David Ampofo will come on your show. Can he come? I said, Doc, because of your relationship with Good Evening Ghana, anything you want on Good Evening Ghana, we'll do it. He said, okay, David Ampofo is coming. David came to the show and rattled CPP. And <laughs> he spoke in Fanti, and it was such a great program. So uh, when Dr. Indu's bank was taken, he was in America, he sent me a couple of texts. And when I read them, I felt very bad. I asked the people that, ah, this Indu GN bank, they said, oh, the books are not good. I said, yeah, this is a difficult matter. Anyway, then one day I met his son. And he said, do you know me? I said, no. He said, I'm something Hindu. I said, oh, yes, Dr. Hindu's son. And then he knew his, my relationship with his father, so we spoke and all that. At that time, he was talking about some financial issues, which I, I won't say here. You know. So, and he was, in, he was beginning new things. He was, I think he started some of those new things, and they are succeeding. So, Dr. Hindu, good evening to you. Thank you very much, wherever you are. I hope that this Supreme Court uh, grant opportunity for you will, will achieve something good for your image and for your bank and for your corporates and your love for Ghana also. Uh, Dr. Indu maybe had a football club, didn't he? Uh, so, Doc, uh, we are with you, yeah? I salute you and we are with you. Uh, okay, so that's a tribute to Dr. Indu. 23 minutes to the top of there. Uh, 23 minutes past 10 o'clock, actually. Now, let's get to the MPP story. This is a big story. And I have drawn a lot from this book. It is entitled, The Dankwa Busia Tradition in Politics of Ghana, The Origins, Mission, and Achievements of the New Patriotic Party. It's written by Kwame Donkofojo. Okay. Uh, Donkofojo is one of the foremost Ghanaians. He was uh, the first managing director from Ghana for the African Development Bank. In the 1970s, late 1970s, Kwame Donkofojo, the author of this book, was the president of the African Development Bank, nominated by Kutua Champon. Kwame Donkofojo was good friends with Kutua Champon as well. And uh, incidentally, Donkofojo lives in Kumase, but his house in Accra is in Osu Ringwe Estates. And it's directly, directly opposite his house is where we conducted the interview with Usu Fiyako to the interview we played back last Tuesday. Usu Fiyakoto's house is directly opposite Kwame Donko Fojo's house at Ringwe. You know, so that, that's a side story. You don't need to know about it. Okay. So this week, Dr. Baumia has been campaigning in Ashanti. And he has said something. He has said, I am a seed nurtured by Kofo. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a seed brought by Kofo and nurtured by Akufuado. I'm going to explain to you, viewers, the, the deeper meaning 
of what Dr. Baumia meant, that I am a seed of Akuf, of Kufo, nurtured by Akufo Ado. That's a deep, there's a much deeper meaning to that. And I thought, how am I going to explain? I'm going to use the history of the party to show you this matter. So let's get on and let's grab this story. Okay, I begin here. United Gold Coast Convention. Dr. Dankwa, the, the, the foremost thought leader, and uh, thought leader, yes, of the, of the whole democracy and independence conversation. Dankwa is a thought leader of that. I mean, that, that cannot change, can it? Now, if Dankwa is a thought leader, then the first major financier that gave us independence was Pa Grant. Pa Grant here is the one who thought that, shouldn't we have an organization to challenge this abrofo over here? And Grant is a businessman. He said, I need somebody who is a brain. He said, Dan Kwa is a philosopher, he's a lawyer, he's a PhD in uh, religion, all that. So he called Dan Kwa. I believe Dan Kwa was his lawyer at the time. I said, Dan Kwa, can you put something together and that story is known? So this is the beginning, UGCC, that's Dan Kwa. And I'm coming out. Now, who is Dr. Dan Kwa? Dr. Dan Kwa is an Achim from Chibi. He is also the uh, uncle of, uh, of uh, Nanado Dan Kwa Kufuado and, and quite close to him as well. So Dan Kwa represents a certain tribe, if you like, Achim, and lawyers and all of that. So the beginnings and the formations of the NPP tradition, the brain, brain of it, the thought leadership is from Dankwa. Okay. And so the, the brain is from Dankwa. The money is from Grant. Grant is from Takrade, Western region. So the brain started from Dankwa. The money came from Grant. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, after Dankwa was defeated by Nkrumah and all of that, Busia formed the Ghana Congress Party. Okay, Dankwa was still around, but Busia formed the Ghana Congress Party. Now, Busia is a Bono, but he's Ashanti, as it was then. Bono and Ashanti were together. So, Busia sort of represented the other group. So, you see, the things that are with Dankwa and Grant. Now it comes to Buzia takes a lead role in it. Buzia is coming from the Ashantis. He sets up a party, Ghana Congress Party. It doesn't quite succeed. Uh, Nkrumah defeats them heavily. And then the Ashantis are looking at this from, from an angle and agreeing with the philosophy of Dankwa, agreeing with the philosophy of Buzia, but finding it difficult to agree with the philosophy of Nkrumah because the Ashantis wanted to be independent, to have their money and to deal with their money. They didn't want a central government, as Nkrumah was proposing, so that their cocoa money goes elsewhere. That, that's the real conversation between the Ashantis and Nkrumah. Ashantis wanted federalism. Nkrumah wanted a very strong, powerful central government. Ashantis didn't want a central government. They wanted a government sitting in Accra, like the white man was doing, leave us to run our Ashanti region with our cocoa. Eastern region can run their Eastern region. Everybody runs their own. We all contribute to the center like a typical federal state like America or like Nigeria or like South Africa. So that was the main disagreement. So the Ashanti support Busia. Okay, so Busia was thought of as an Ashanti candidate. But then they found out that it looks like Busia doesn't have enough money to really push this agenda. The CPP had been in power since 1951, and um, Busia formed his party in 1953 or so. The CPP had won the elections in 1950, and they were in power in 1951, so they had resources. And the Ashantis felt that the, the difficulty with Busia is that he didn't have resources. So, okay, next epoch, NLM. NLM comes in. Bafo was Akoto, the Asante Hines linguist, and the father of Osu Ifri Akoto, one of the MPP 10 presidential aspirants. He is holding cash, okay? He's a big cocoa farmer. He's holding cash. He's working for Nanajman Prempe II, the Asante Hine. So they form a party called the NLM at Mesha Palace, the Asante Hine, Nanajman Prempe, set up a political party to oppose the CPP and to change the agenda of unitary state into a federal arrangement for Ghana. He knows of Dankwa, so he picks up Dankwa's brain. And then he knows of Buzi as well, who is a member of parliament. So in the NLM arrangement, after the NLM had actually won a by-election, as we talked about the other day, in 1954, they had won a by-election at Chumangwa Bieja to bring in President Kufuor's uh, all-time all political mentor, B.F. Kusi, who handed the constituency over to uh, President Kufuor in... Um, and uh, uh, later on, Achumangwa Beja. So that is the by-election at Achumangwa Beja, a seat that was held by the CPP. Uh, Bafour set up NLM to push the agenda at that time, and they were successful. So there was a lot of momentum around the LLM. So Dankwa was the thought leader, is the leader outside parliament. Buzia is the leader in parliament. Bafour is the financier. So this is the, the Achim brain and the Ashanti money. That's, that's how it started. Okay, 
Let's see what happens next. So Nkrumah then passes the law, Avoidance of Discrimination Act. So the Northern People's Party are coming in, etc., etc. So SD Dombo now comes in for the Northern People's Party. Strong man. Buzia is still there in parliament as leader. Now, when they go to parliament, the NPP actually win more seats than the NLM. Even though the people in the NPP seats may be fewer, they win more seats. So SD Dombo is supposed to lead the group. Dombo, however, uh, listens to Bafo Sakoto, who prefers Buzia to Dombo. So Dombo is the reason why the UP succeeded. Because Dombo then agrees that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'll leave it for Buzia. Very significant. I'm, I'm showing you why Dr. Balmia is saying, I am Kufo Seed, nurtured by Akufo Ado. I'm bringing you the history. When he said that, it didn't mean, it's not simple. It's deep. Okay. So this is SD Dombo, Dr. Balmia's father's close friend, Dombo. And Dr. Balmia's father is a member of the NPP as well, the New Northern People's Party, I should say. So Dombo listens to the advice. Some people call it instruction. Some people call it cajoling. Some people call it by force. Some people even call it patapa. Some people say that. Some people think it was in negotiation. Some people, but it was upon the advice of Bafo. And it's because Bafo's preference was for Buzia. Because they are together, Bono Ashanti kind of thing. Dombo accepts the decision. And that is why the UP succeeded. If Dombo did not accept the decision, and he decided that the MPP would go on his own, the Northern People's Party go on his own, LLM go on his own, that would have ended. If we wouldn't have had any Damkwa Buzia today, we wouldn't be talking about UNC, there would be nothing. But it was Dombo who decided that it doesn't matter. Now, when you read the account, Dombo says that he admired Buzia. That Buzia spoke very well. And that Buzia was well-versed in the affairs of state. Buzia had been a DC with, for the white people in the 40s. So Buzia was well-versed with the way government runs. And Dombo noticed that, as both of them were members of parliament. So Dombo stood down for Buzia. Buzia led the United Party in parliament. Dankwa remained the leader outside parliament. So it is Dankwa, Dombo, and Buzia. They are truly the origins of the UP. With Bafo's money. Interesting. Bafo's money and Buzia, Dombo, and Dankwa. Okay, let's move on from UP. So Dankwa goes to jail under Nkrumah, PDA, and unfortunately passes. He dies. Dombo remains in parliament and runs away to exile because between 1957 and 1964, there was no parliamentary election. MPs were just running away because Nkrumah was looking for you. And it's not just opposition MPs, government MPs, including the Minister of Finance, ran away from parliament because Nkrumah was looking for them. Okay, so he ran away, he ran away, he died in jail. That's what happened to the tradition. Dankwa died in 1964 in jail. Dombo ran away, went to exile. Buzia ran to London, went to exile. Everybody was afraid of Nkrumah. Bafo Akoto goes to jail as well. Bafo goes to jail. That's a sad story, but that's the history of Ghana. We will never get there anymore, would we? No, we won't. Bafo is going to jail as well, but he doesn't die. He's in the jail. In fact, Dankwa went to jail because he filed a writ to challenge Balfour being jailed. The case is entitled Ria Koto, you know, Akoto and the rest. Balfour was jailed, and Dankwa filed a habeas corpus application for him. And the process went through. The Supreme Court ruled that he was properly in jail. Later on, Dankwa himself was arrested and jailed. Dankwa didn't survive the jail. He died. Dombo ran and Buzia ran. Okay. Then came, the, so after the coup in 1966, democracy was restored in the election. Uh, the group had to form... A political party the rules at the time same as rules that we have used up till now does not allow people to use an old name to form a political party it doesn't so nobody could say they are cpp and nobody could say they are uh, up because that's what the rules are so for the uh, recollection the up people wanted something that has a p so they went for pp progress party <coughs> sorry they went for progress party that's what they got now, Progress Party was obviously led by Busia. I'm not sure where Dombo was. I, I, I probably think he didn't come back or something like that. Or Dombo may have been part of the Progress Party. But I'll check that. So that's Busia there as the Progress Party leader being sworn in by Afrifa. You see? That's, that's 1969. Okay, let's come back to the studio. So this man here 
is a, a BJ Darocha. This man here is BJ Darocha. BJ Darocha was one of the moving forces of this matter. Now, who does BJ Darocha represent? BJ Darocha actually represents Dankwa. Why do I say so? Because BJ Darocha is coming from the law firm, the stables, and the political tuition of Edward Akufuado, Akufuado's father. Edward Akufuado in his law firm called Kwakwaduam Chambers. Kwakwaduam Chambers was a law firm in Adabraka in the 60s. And Darocha was one of the finest juniors in that law firm. Darocha developed a very personal attachment to his boss, his senior lawyer, Edward Akufuado. And Edward's philosophy is from Dankwa. So Darocha is the Dankwa part. So whilst they build the Progress Party, the MPP people, the historical MPP, still keep at the back of their mind the roles for people. Where are the Dankwa people? So Buzi Afoni has Antifona for leadership now. And the General Secretary is not Dankwa for no. That's the argument, the, un the unspoken, unspoken argument. So Darocha becomes the General Secretary of the party. Buzia is a Prime Minister, equally shared. And then the problem starts from here. Okay, so this uh, uh, group are overthrown by a champon. A champon is gone, it's overthrown the government. There's a uh, UNC, uh, what, what did he call it? SMC government, SMC1, Supreme Military Council. And uh, Darota goes to jail, Buzia is exiled. Buzia was out of the country when the coup occurred anyway. He didn't come back. And then he died in exile, unfortunately. Uh, Darota is in jail, they are released, they are around, they are doing Ghana Bar Association. Darota is teaching at Ghana School of Law and later became the director. And then politics comes back again after Rawlings, a, a champion, a Kufu Rawlings, and then there's elections. Politics comes back again, doesn't it? And they have to form a political party again. And so they come back to the argument, who is going to be our leader? Buzia is dead. And then they say, ah, but if Dankwa didn't lead because he didn't win the election and he died, and the chances came through Buzia, the thing must go back to the Dankwa people. Okay, let me take you back to the slide. Yeah, back to this one. So the argument made then was that, and I'm, I'm sure it's an argument that had been made by Darocha and others. Buzia had his turn for the Ashantis. Dankwa is the one who started this thing. When we came into power, it was Buzia who became prime minister in Progress Party. If today Buzia has passed and there is a new political situation, it has to go to the next person okay that was one argument i'll come to who they meant by the next person the other argument was that buzia served only two terms and the coup came so if it's politics again the ashanti still have it it is still for the ashanti it's not for anybody buzia, no 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 buzia has had his turn it's finished we are starting afresh they said okay if we're starting afresh it goes to that chimps Pawili was a member of the big six buzia was not a member of the big six so there was outrage that, ah, you people, it is only Pawili. Pawili must get this thing unopposed. Why should anybody compete with Pawili? After all, Pawili was a member of the Big Six. Buzia was not a member of the Big Six. If Buzia be trying to be the prime minister and the opportunity has come again, it is Pawili's turn to be it. Nobody can change that. Was, the, the same things happening today, same things happened then. G -g 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 and you know who were doing the gay, 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 You can imagine who they are. All the people who are old today, it was them. They were wild. Okay. So let's move the story to now UNC. So this is Pauli. So this is the story. So the people agree that it looks like it's Pauli. No, nobody should make any fuss about it. This is Pauli. So they go to Pauli. They say, Wafa, politics has come again. We are delighted to inform you that from amongst the people, left and right, from Gambaga to Accra, from Urosu to Keta, across the country, they think that you should be our leader. Pauli said, me? I am doing Bible. I am the president of the uh, Scripture Union, Bible Society. Massacre, I don't want to do any poll. And the people say, oh, for Pauli has let us down. How? Then some people were celebrating at the back. They were in Kumasi, Apia Minka, and Ko. They were excited. They went to Victor Usu and said, Victor, Pauli see on you. Or see on you, and you see on you. Then Usu said, oh, Pauli says he won't do it. Why? He said he's doing bad. Oh, I'll do it. So Usu starts announcing, uh, you know, starts uh, playing. Please, they should get the UNC video. I need it. The UNC video. They should get it. It's there. Okay. The, no, the UNC song video. Advert video. Terrico, no, it's ready. Okay. The, sorry, viewers. So uh, Usu says, I will do it. I will do it. But also, he's a foremost lawyer, blah, 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 blah. 
Now, who is Victor Usu? I'm building to the Akufuado story, to the Baumia story. Who is Victor Usu? Victor Usu is a CPP man. Victor Usu is a CPP member of parliament in Ashanti. That's Victor Usu. That's how he starts. Okay, so he's following Kwame Nkrumah and doing CPP work in Kumase. Then Bafu Akoto goes to Victor Usu's father and says, Fraubana Mami. I'm talking stories that happened when we were all not born. He tells Usu that, ah, what is wrong with you? Are you not an Ashanti? Ashanti is forming a political party and you are following Kwame Nkrumah. Are you crazy? Victor says, oh, Ashanti is doing a party, but of course. So I want you to leave that CPP seat in parliament, come and do a by-election, win the same thing in Kumasi, and you are winning it for the NLM. Usu says, if that is so, I will come with Joe Apia. He says, yes, Apia is also a friend of mine. Bafo is very powerful. And he had a lot of money. <laughs> so, Victor Usu then comes to join the NLM. And Nkrumah is very disappointed because Victor Usu was one of the brains that Osajifu relied on. Osajifu is very disappointed and Osajifu is angry with Bafo for playing tribal politics. And that is the beginning of the Avoidance of Discrimination Act. Nkrumah in his mind, if you read his autobiography, was concerned about Victor Usu's exit, believing that Usu didn't do that on his own, but Bafo had perpetrated tribal politics on Usu. So, Usu left. He is now NLM. That's how he joins the group. He joins the group on the Ashanti ticket. But, still the story. Darocha, here, was a pupil in Akufado's chambers. And he was very favored by Akufado because Darocha was brilliant. And that is why we captured Darocha as Akufado Dankwa's side of the party. Now, if Darocha had a partner in that chambers who was also really, really favored by Akufado, it was Victor. Uh, this way. It was Victor Usu. Victor Usu was the other young man in Akufado's chambers. You see how the story is evolving, view. It's a beautiful story, and I'm sharing with you because when I heard Dr. Baumia talk, I said, ah, I know what he's talking about. So I'm, I'm sharing the story with you. So Ousu is, um, Ousu is, um, is now, is, is, comes from the stable of Akufado with Darocha. But he's now been recruited by Bafo to join NLM because Bafo says, you're an Ashanti. You're an Ashanti, he is doing something. So you need to join. So now back to 79. Ousu is told that, I want to, I want to run. People go to Pawili and say, hey, uh, if you don't take this thing, the Ashantis are going to take it. Dankwa didn't get it. Buzia took it. It's our turn now. And you want the Ashantis to take it again. Now they are using Victor Usu. And Usu is going to win this thing. So Pawili, stop your Bible thing. Wake up and come. So they gather in Pawili's house in Tesano. <laughs> they are shouting and screaming. And Pawili is worried about too many people in his house. And too many shouting and this politics. And they, 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 they say, you lie. You do it. <laughs> so they pull Pawili out. The good thing about that group, the, the lobbies of that group, was that they had always perceived the spread of the party. They had always perceived the, the party spreading across, not just about Ashanti and Eastin, but going across. That, that lobby began with the UNC people. Some of those who spoke for the UNC, Peter Ajete, Obeda Samoa, yes, Obeda Samoa, Alhaji Mahama Idrisu, yes, Alhaji Mahama Idrisu, Dr. Agama, the former governor of the bank, all of those people wanted to build a political party that sort of cuts across rather than one that just looks like Ashanti. Okay, so they pulled Pawili out. By the time they got Pawili to make the decision, they had already gathered enough people from normal, outside the NLM, outside the Bafos, Akoto, Buzia, NLM, and they, they gathered quite a few people. So, Pawili decides that, okay, I will run. I'll do it. So, they tell Usu that, Victor, Pawili is your bayo, inti jai. Victor says, me jai, me jai saying, no, say, Pawili, we see a time. Yeko kache, no, so, nye, afi, also, bayo, we are a political party, we are a democracy, let's go to a congress. Na, musi, me jai, me jai, say, di inti, me jai, let's go to a congress. This is Usu's people making that argument. That, no, 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 we are not going to step down for Pawili, let's go to a congress, and the who wins, wins. They go to the congress, Victor wins. Victor Usu is elected. Pauli is deselected. At the Congress, the member of the Big Six, the one before Buzia, the prominent one, Pauli was defeated and Usu is elected. 
And the people say that, ah, uh, so you people knew that you win the election, so you were doing, let's go to election, let's go to election, we are angry with you. And also says, we went to an election. A candidate has emerged. What is the problem? Okay, this is where the problem starts. Pauli is convinced by his people to set up a political party called the United National Convention, also claiming the Dankwa Buzia tradition, and in fact, having people in there who are proper Dankwa Buzia. And then there is the Popular Front Party of Victor Usu, which is also claiming the Dankwa Buzia tradition for the 1979 election. Everybody knows, and the record shows, that if this didn't happen, one of them would have been elected president. Everybody knows that. Because they were the strong political party. In 1979, the Dan Kwabuzia dominated Ghana's politics. But they split. And the Nkrumahism was still powerful. The power of Nkrumahism was still powerful. Dr. Liman was able to gather big Nkrumahism. Kochi Berkwin and uh, Krabo Eduse, they were still alive. Uh, Kojo Botsio, they were there. Afro Bedema, they were there. And they rallied behind Liman. And they resurrected the Nkrumah's power of campaigning. It was really there. So, Owusu and Pawili go to the election together with Liman. Okay. Uh, what's the next slide? All right, yeah, this, this is UNC. This is UNC. I'm going to talk about this. So, this is a UNC poster that a friend of mine sent to me. It's called Xerox. Thank you very much. This is a UNC poster. Okay, I'm going to tell you the people in there. So, uh, and get the UNC tape ready. The tape has a song that says, Vote for the UNC, the party for you. Broad based, the best. UNC, so you see, they say broad based. Broad based, the best. UNC all the way. Convention, a clean, because Pauli was a priest. Owusu was unmarried. So the convention, a clean, was a, was a small job to Owusu. Convention, a clean, Pauli Neko. Now, they chose convention also because of the United National Convention, the UN, UGCC, United Gold Coast Convention. It, that party was called the convention. So they said, convention, a clean. Pa Wilia and Echo play that song to you. But here are the people. It says, watch out for the winners. Uh, the UNC candidates for Greater Accra Region on parade throughout the principal streets of Accra tomorrow, 16 June 1979, to be followed by a mass rally at the Nima Park. Hey. Yeah, so this is what was going on. Okay, yeah, I like this. Let's, let's show this one. So in the center here is Pa Wili, presidential candidate. To Pa Willis' right is Mr. Ni Amate Fio, Mr. No, public relations consultant, parliamentary candidate for Okaikwe, and he's also the director of operations. Very powerful team. Ni Amate Fio was a great Nkrumahist. Okay, viewers, don't take your eyes off at this moment. Don't take it off at all. To Pa Willis' left and to the right of your screen is Harry Sawyer. Harry Sawyer was a charter surveyor, and he was parliamentary candidate for Usuklote. Harry Sawyer, the same NPNDC, NDC, Harry Sawyer. He was a Dankwa Buziaist. And I'm, that's what I'm telling you, viewers, that the Dankwa Buzia tradition had dominated the country. All right, let's move to the next line. We start from the right. G.Q. Botri. He was an industrialist and he's a parliamentary candidate for Gang Rural. Next, viewers, get ready for this one. Peter Ala Ajete, barrister at law, parliamentary candidate for Peshi, Peter Ala Ajete. Still don't take your eyes off. Now, we all know who Peter Ajete is, isn't he? Former Speaker of Parliament. But this is 1979. Now, to Ajete's left is N. N. Heward Mills, barrister at law, parliamentary candidate for Ashie Duketeke. Do you know who he is? Doug Heward Mills' father, the pastor. Doug Heward Mills. That's his father. That's, that's his father. He lived with him in Tessa, no? And he took him to Achimota School. That is Daggy or Moses' father. So you see, you see the way Ghana works. Yeah, we are building a real story. But may I tell something? We are giving you the deeper meaning. Okay. Uh, 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 and then he was Mills. Now, the last row. T.N. Nelson Kofi. Uh, there's Tay. Tay Dr. Dr. Tay Dakun. And my favorite one, David Lamte. The same David Lamte who was an NDC parliamentary candidate. The famous David Lamte at some point thought to be the richest man in Ghana. I used to work for him. That's David Lamte. He's there. David Lamte is parliamentary candidate. Ayawaso. David Lamte for the UNC. And then you have J. Alote Kofi. And then you have Ago Mensa. Now look at the last line. H.P. Nyemite. He's a, 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 a parliamentary candidate. Now H.P. Nyemite is one of the greatest friends of President Kufuor. Because President Kufo told me a story about House of Folk and Asante Kotoko. And H.P. Nyamite was very big in House of Folk. And they were 
tight, tight, tight bodies. That's HP Nyamite in the UNC situation. President Kufo, however, was in PFP. He was parliamentary candidate for Chumang Wabeja on the Popular Front Party, the opposite party of the UNC. But he's one of his good friends, HP Nyamite. Okay, we don't take your eyes off one more. Uh, Alahaji Mahama Idrisu. He is the vice presidential candidate of the party. And he says, UNC all the way. The same Al Haji Muhammad Idrisu that you know today. The same Al Haji Muhammad Idrisu has been the longest serving minister for defense. The same Al Haji Muhammad Idrisu who is married to Betty Mould. The same Al Haji Muhammad Idrisu who is brother in law with Alex Mould. Alex, who could be John Muhammad's running mate? <laughs> okay. Now, last one Professor C.O. Ismond. Convention. He says, a clean. Professor Ismond is here as well, the famous medical practitioner. And uh, he's, what's Professor Ismond over there? Professor Ismond is the vice chairman, the national vice chairman of the party. Really handsome man, Professor Ismond. So that is the UNC group. I want you to just listen to that song, Small. We'll come back and continue with the story. Broad Bay is the best. Uh, what what did they say, Broad Bay is the best? Ah, I've forgotten. All right, here's a song. The UNC, the party for you. For you and me, the party for you. Rob is the best. You and me all the way. Convention A and B. Pa will be the best. You and me all the way. Convention A and B. Mr. Arnold. Convention A and B. Pa will be the best. You and me the party for you. For for you and me. The party for you, Rob is the best. You and him all the way. Convention A and B, Paul and Paul. Rob is the best. You and him all the way. Convention A and B, Mr. and Paul. Convention A and B, Paul and Paul. All right. So <laughs> that was a UNC. Now. So, UNC splits up like that, okay? You haven't finished the UNC story. It's still an interesting story. Get me uh, back, uh, Usu, and uh, yes. So, they went into the election. Victor Usu came second to Liman, close second. So, Liman couldn't win a, a first round victory. Now, the combination of the two would have given them victory. In the second round, in the second round, negotiations occurred. Everyone took it for granted that the Dankwa Buzia people will unite and win this thing. Everyone took it for granted. But somehow, Pali was advised and the UNC supported Liman. Owusu didn't become president. Owusu felt a stab in his stomach from his own people, from the people with whom he shared a grandfather Dankwa, from the people with whom he shared a father Buzia. From the people he sat in cabinet with, in fact, Owusu and Ofuata sat in cabinet and switched positions. Attorney General, he was first Attorney General and he was Foreign Minister and Buzia switched them. So they know each other so well. In fact, President Kufour talks about the privilege of having worked for both men. But in 79, President Kufour chose PFP. Nanado Danko Akufuado, however, did not indicate and did not fully participate because of the one leg he had here and another leg he had here. This was his friend and famous uh, mentor, lawyer, his father's mentee, who had become his mentor. Uusu was so tight with Akufado and Akufado's family. And when Uusu died, I happened to be the MC for the event in 2002 at the conference center when Victor Uusu's funeral, I was the MC, and, and Nana Akufado spoke to me, and Reko Brobe came, I read the tribute. So I understand Akufado's relationship with Uusu. He was very tight with Uusu. But Pauli was his uncle. So the story is that Akufado used this opportunity to make friends in PFP and friends in UNC. And according to the story, he did not actually vote on the day. So I'm building to a story, viewers. And I start with Akufa, I'm coming to Baumia. According to the story, Akufa did not cast a vote in 79. He was, he, was, he was there because he associated with both the PFP and the UNC. And that he had been a principal idea for the APP party, which was a merger of the two of them, later, later on. I'll come to that. Okay. So Owusu feels a stab in the back, okay? And he thinks that Pauli and his people have dealt him the blow. They just didn't want him to be president. Okay, so this is what the Achim people have done. That's how they saw it. That's how they saw it. This is what the Achim people have done to us. That's how Bafo Sakoto saw it. That's why Usu saw it. That's how the people at the palace saw it. Okay, so comes 19, uh, 2000, 1992. The formation of a new party. The new patriotic party. 
Again, the law says that you can't use any old name, otherwise they would have gone to Progress Party. They, can't, they won't do UNC, they won't do PFP, they'll go to Progress Party. And then uh, the, the law says you, can, you have to choose a new party. So they are picking a name that is as near Progress Party as possible. Because the Progress Party was quite popular, they believe that the coup was unpopular. They believe that uh, hindsight will help Ghanaians to understand that the Progress Party was a very good party. And it was a very good government too. So they want a name that is as near the Progress Party as possible. So they choose NPP. Okay. Now these are the leaders of the NPP. I'm going to pick them one by one. Professor Charles Edouboahin, UNC. Peter Alajete, UNC. Dr. Kwame Safwedu, PFP. Malik Yakub Al Hassan, PFP. Ni Ata Odoi Sykes, PFP. Major Kwashiga, actually PNDC, but better aligned to the UNC group because Obeda Samoa and Agama, who were some of his mentors, were in the UNC. So I'll put Kwashiga at UNC. Uh, Janice Selby, PFP. John Ajekum Kufuor, PFP. Nanado Danko Akufuado, where would you put him? That's a story. That's Akufuado's strength that came up later on. 20, 30, 40 years later in the party. Akufado stood in the middle. About the few, one of the few people who were in the middle. Dr. Richard Anani, Kwame Makutufo, and all of them, very strong PFP people. Okay. So then comes uh, Edu Boahe. Edu Boahe runs for elections. UNC, remember? Now, when Edu Boahe was running, the chairman of the party was Peter Ajete. So look that the UNC people had grabbed the, the lead, sort of. Okay. Uh, so Edu Boahe runs as UNC candidate. UNC at the back of the mind is the MPP candidate. He doesn't win. And then there's conversation. Edu Boahe is not strong enough to be able to, how many votes did he win Ashanti? Edu Boahe had won about 60 something percent in Ashanti. And that if, the, if he wasn't the UNC matter, and uh, by this time, Victor Usu is still alive, by the way. Usu is still alive. If it's not the UNC matter and Ashanti had voted for him, he would have done better. And uh, by now, Rollins will not be president. So you look at Edu Boahe's vote, Ashanti was very small. I mean, not, not small, small, but not to today's percentages. Because they felt that the pain of Victor Usu was still in the heart of the Ashantis. And they couldn't see how they would make a president out of one of Power Willis people. No. So the voting was some way. Okay. So Edu Boahe doesn't, doesn't get it. And then there's another opportunity in 1996. Uh, Kwame Pienim. Uh, yes, Kwame Pienim, who is PFP, steps up to challenge Edu Boahe in the Congress. Okay, big story, big deal, really, really big matter. And then uh, Kwame Pienim is looking like a candidate who can win because even though he's PFP and he's Ashanti, uh, he has Reku Brobe with him, he gets Major Kwashika with him as well. And he has some important people, Stanley Aji, Blankson, and some people with him. And it looks like Kwame Pienim is pushing. Those of you who were around at the time, you saw, they used to say Kwame Pienim, the winner. They used to call him showboy. Nahotama Klo was in there as well. Very powerful team. And then a court case emerged. Uh, truly, the court case is set up by, it looks like, internalists. So they get Rosemary Kwam to challenge Kwame Pienim's credibility. Kwame Pienim is a... Um, it has done a coup against Rawlings and he's in jail. He went to jail for 10 years and he's come out. They say he has treason, so they can't, he can't be president. The matter goes to the Supreme Court. The Attorney General is invited into the matter. The MPP lawyers are led by Peter Alajete. And the MPP goes to court and says, this is not a matter they are interested in. They are not going to file any defense for Kwame Pienim. They are not interested in the matter. This is ahead of the MPP Congress. Kwame Pienim goes to court with an injunction on the Congress for the Congress to wait for his court case. The injunction succeeds, so the Congress is waiting. MPP is invited. What do you have to say about Kwame Pienim? Kwame Pienim is PFP. Ajete is UNC. Ajete says, we are not interested. Pienim feels, oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so the court says that Pienim cannot run for president with the huge popularity. Okay, people now say that, okay, if Pienim cannot run, Dubai will be given a second chance. The Ashanti said, hell no. Dubai will not be given any chance. If PNM cannot run, Kufo is there. Kufo will run. So, they throw PNM support to Kufo, and Kufo defeats Dubai in 1996. Victor Usu is still alive. Okay. Then, uh, Kufo goes to the contest. That's better than Dubai, but Rollins still wins. But Kufo does a little bit better than Dubai. Slightly, not, not much, small. Okay. Ashanti said that, ah, I said Kufo, I did see a Dubai. Said 2000, the JJ on JB, JJ Niwa, Kufo Binya. So the momentum of the party is that J Kufo should go to, the, to become the presidential candidate again. 
and people are beginning to like Jay Kofor. He's attending funerals. People are seeing him. He's like his tall frame figure. And they are really loving John Ajikum Kofor. And then the contest is to happen in 1998. What happens? Nana Adodankwa Akufuado says, I want to challenge Jay Kofor. They say, yeah, Achim Fono Ababiom. Achim Fono, every time they want to spoil our party. Paul Willi didn't allow Victor Wusu. He didn't support him for the second round. Now that the thing is for Kufo too, Opana says he wants to contain here. They are the same knee. But here's a twist. Akufado secure, secures significant support in Ashanti. The Nyantichis are with him. Main Ashanti people, they're supporting Akufado. Why? Because his, his wife had been a daughter of the Mampohini. So he had deep roots in Ashanti. He had given pro bono legal work to Asante Kotoko for many, many years. In the glorious days of Asante Kotoko in the 80s, in the Yabewa and Sims Kofi Mensa period, Akufado had been the Asante Kotoko lawyer for free. So his connection to Asante man was strong. And that's, that's where I'm coming to. And so when he decided to mount a challenge against J.A. Kufo, it was thought that this was going to be a very significant challenge. And the Kufo people felt that, look at this UNC guy. But the real picture of the man was not complete UNC, was it? Because here's a guy who had strong Ashanti support. The Nyantichis are Ashanti royals. One of the Nyantichis was married to Pokuwari's daughter. And they threw their open support behind Anna Kufuado. However, Kufo wins the contest. Kufo defeats Akufuado and becomes. Okay. So they do government. They start government. And everybody now thinks that uh, this is... Everybody now thinks... After Kufo, it's Akufuado. In any case, Buzia had his turn. Uh, the 79 was botched. Edubuahi didn't win. Kufo has won it. So after that, the thing has to gladly come back to their chimps. So everybody in the party thought, Ye nimu frititi. Nana do danko Akufuado. Okay. As the contest gets closer in 2007, closer to 2007, so, oh, Victor Usu is by now dead though. Some of the people say, she. Sorry, sorry, you know those people fighting. Because everybody thinks, ah, but this is for Kufuado. What was Alan Chamartin's business in there? But he's coming from history. What was your business in there? You two, what was your business? You two, at that time, what did you do? 79, what happened? When Buzia came, uh, and nobody didn't get anything. Yes. <laughs> That's how politics is. So, Alan Chamartin pops up. His campaign is well oiled. Full of oil. Well, well oiled. He hits the campaign trail. And what a beautiful campaign Alan presents in 2007. The bicycle rides, the songs, and I mean, some of the songs are still resonating. Hey, Alan, Chematiana, Yenim. Still, still nice. But that was in 2007. It was a great campaign. That campaign, the fact that that campaign didn't win, is the strength of Akufuado. Because that Alan Chematin 2007 campaign, I'm yet to see another one. I don't even think Alan himself can mount one now. The, the power of that campaign, those of you who are alive, Saturday mornings, you see thousands of men wearing white shirts riding bicycle, Accra, Kumasi, Takra, the Tamale at the same time. And they are doing Alan it, it was It was brutal, that campaign was. Journalists didn't know how to cover it. Activities were occurring everywhere. The, a contest eventually occurred at Legon. Akufado was elected. So they said, okay, he can have it. Cool. Now, after that, well, light a lie, the thing is coming back home. <laughs> okay. So the, after that, then they hear that Agufado is saying, bow me ahead, these people. When it's our turn, they are going to bring another person. Then somebody says, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bow me is here another person, this Kufo's guy. And the Ashantis are going to back him. And then the wound to miss rise up and say, we are Ashantis, we support Baumia. So you see the characterization of Akufuado in the UNC PFP situation is very similar to the characterization of Dr. Baumia in the Ashanti versus Achim situation. That's the point Baumia was making. He was speaking to this history that with me, I will deliver Ashanti. I will win it. And I will win Eastin. And I will bring my Dombo people. It's Dombo's turn. But for me, Baumia, it's not even about Dombo. I am Kufo and I am Akufuado. I am blue 
and I am red. That's the point Dr. Baumia was making. That's the story. That's the point. That's the point he was making. And he's going to be challenging Alan on that basis. And people are going to find, and that's what he says, he says, I am Kufo's seed nurtured by an anado. That's, that's, that's the story. That's the point that Baumia was making, that his Kufo's seed is nurtured by an anado. So he comes from UNC, PFP, Buzia, Dombo, Bafo, Sakoto, they are all in Dr. Baumia. And he's going to be able to break the trend of the regular representation of the party by accounts. He's going to restore the Dombo conversation. That's his campaign. That's what he's saying. And that's the story I'm bringing to you today that if Dr. Baumia says something like that today, uh, thank you very much to Dr. Kwame Donkofojo from whose book we got all of this uh, information. The book is available at the University of Ghana Bookshop, those of you who want to buy it. Or you can call Dr. Donkofojo. It's in Kumasi and uh, he'll, he'll give you one. Dr. Donkofojo is about it's almost 90 years now and he's still with us. Uh, we thank God for his life. Uh, okay, so that's what Dr. Baumia meant. I'm going to link this straight to Dr. Baumia's campaign that's been going on in the uh, Dr. Baumia's campaign going on in the Ashanti region, the heart of the matter. This is Baumia in Ashanti. <laughs>
Oh, yes. Uh, I'm delighted people are enjoying it. And I've, I've been corrected, okay? Uh, there's a small error I made that has been corrected by uh, a minister. He just called me. He said, so this is BJ Darocha, Buzia's general secretary, okay? Now, I, I fast forward it to um, the MPP here. BJ Darocha, I've been told, and that is correct, was the chairman of the party when Edu Boahin was the candidate. BJ Darocha is PFP. He's PFP. I put him in PFP now. So Edu Boahin is UNC. And the story is that BJ Darocha was not even talking to Edu Boahin. Darocha was the chairman of the party. Edu Boahin was the presidential candidate. Darocha was not talking to him because he's carrying the pain of PFP UNC. So when Darocha wanted to tell Edu Boahin something, he would go through Nana Akufuado in 1992, for Nana Akufado to tell Edu Bohen, that's how come Akufado became the campaign manager of the 92 election. He spent quite a bit of money on it as well. But that's why he became the campaign manager, because Darocha is not talking to Edu Bohen. So Darocha calls him to say, go and tell Edu Bohen, say, dear man, dear man, no. something like that. You know, so uh, that's, that's, that, that's the story. Uh, so that was, the, that was Dr. Baumia's video, and I, I think that we get the story. Well, this is a photograph of Dr. Baumia and J. Kufo. He says that uh, it was, it was uh, J. Kufo who who seeded him, and then uh, Akufuado nurtured him. That's, that's the story of Dr. Baumia. It's uh, 12 minutes past the top of the hour, 11 o'clock. Martin Amidou has been saying something, but I'll show you about it. It's quite interesting what he says in favor of Godfrey Dami and against the NDC minority. Um, uh, before I do the Martin Amidou, let me... Uh, what am I doing? 12. Okay. They showed me the time, so I got a bit confused. Okay, let's do the Martin Amidou, and then we end it with it. We won't do the... We won't do the zoom line. We'll, we'll take the zoom line next week or something like that. Okay, let's, let's do the Martin Amidou. Or they should give us a few more minutes. We'll do the zoom line. Uh, so, Betty Moldy Drisu is here. Uh, and this is Attorney General uh, Godfrey Dami. Martin Amidou says, two wrongs do not make a right. Martin Amidou slams NDC for attacks on Godfrey Dami. Okay, this is what he says. He says, former Special Prosecutor Martin Amidou has taken a swipe at his party. The National Democratic Congress over its attack on the Attorney General Godfrey Ebu Adami. The legal director of the National Democratic Congress quizzled Godfrey Adami about his reasons for not trying the case of Namwan, Ameswale, Major Mahama and others daily. The NDC's inquiry comes on the back of the belief that the government and the Attorney General are persecuting its members instead of prosecuting them. In a press statement released on Friday, July 7th and available to Ghana Web, the NDC wondered why the AG is not rather focusing on clearly criminal cases like Nana Apia Mensa and the Men's Gold, etc., etc. Reacting to this in a statement issued on July 8th, Martin Amidou said that the content of the statement issued by the NDC legal secretariat is an affront to the 1992 constitution. He added that even if the Attorney General is wrong, in his decision to prosecute members of the NDC, the statement issued by the party is not justified. The weaponization of the criminal defense process in the administration of criminal justice for political electioneering purposes under the 1992 constitution by the NDC Legal Affairs Directorate broad press statement dated July 6, 2023 undermines the letter and the spirit of the constitution. Oh, I see. Okay, that's a long sentence. Uh, by conflating the case of James Chachikwesen with Dr. Stephen Opuni and other cases, the case Lato Forsen case, the Ameswale case, Major Mahama case, JB Dankwa case, Men's Gold case, etc. The NDC, Martin Amidu says, as a public institution, is also clearly attacking the exercise of the prosecutorial authority of the Attorney General under the Constitution in pending criminal cases in court without just cause. Two wrongs, he says, do not make a right. It is one thing to urge or appeal to the executive branch and the attorney general to exercise a prosecutorial discretion to enter a nolly prosecutor in a pending criminal matter. And it is quite another thing to attack the conduct of criminal cases already pending before the courts, Martin Amidou uh, wrote. He added that the position taken by the NDC regarding ongoing prosecution also affects its chances of fighting crime in the event that it comes to power again, etc., etc. So that's Martin Amidou uh, talking to his people and the NDC about uh, how, to, how to deal with the matters correctly. Okay, so uh, last story is about Zoom Lion, isn't it? Uh, two years ago, three years ago, some media people said 
Zoom Lion should be crucified. We stood up and said, no Ghanaian businessman should be crucified. The Ghanaian businessman has done something, the rule should take effect. No company that employs people should be crucified. Zoom Lion has demonstrated his serial entrepreneurship in this and that and that. We saw that he went into rice production. And now, in the next five years, because of Zoom Lion's efforts, we will have sustainable rice in Ghana. That's the kind of businessman that they said we should kill him. We should prosecute him. We should do this. We should make sure his business has collapsed. We should promote Italian, Lebanese, Syrian, Nigerian, and then collapse the Ghanaian. We stood here on this platform by the grace of God, and we said, no way. This will not happen. And we went far and wide. We even had confrontation with J.J. Rollins because of all of these things. But we were sure that what we were saying was right. Zoom Lion moved on to do rice. And the Zambian president, the president of Zambia from Kenneth Kaunda's country, he came to Ghana. He looked at Zoom Lion's work. He said, you, I'm taking you to Zambia. And three years ago, Ghanaians said we should kill Zoom Lion. That's what they were saying. Kill Zoom Lion, kill him. Today, after he entered into rice production with the Republic of Thailand, the Zambian president comes and says, come and take Zambia and do whatever you want to do with it. The Zambian president was on an official state visit to Ghana. He came to meet President Akufuado. And Zoom Lion was there. He said, you, let's go. Just recently, days ago, Zoom Lion commissioned a medical treat waste treatment plant in Kumasi. The same man that they say you should kill him. Everybody who works there is Ghanaian. The same person, they say you should kill him. He, medical waste. Here's a documentary. Have a look. Praise God. And let's move on. Let's not pull them down. Let's get close to them at the top. Have a look. Uh, okay, I think that we have to end it here. Sorry, uh, no more, no more text. At eleven twenty, it's quite a long time. Uh, very busy evening for politics from the MPP Congress. We had a long story. Congratulations, uh, Ben Skyzer, uh, Martin Amidu, uh, for your statement. 
and then uh, congratulations to the Just Pond Group and the Zoom Lion. God bless them, bless them, bless them, and bless them all the time. Uh, may the work of Dr. Japon does not reach Ghana and Africa. May he cross over to the world and may he become the new name in global enterprise uh, so that we can say that we have a Ghanaian up there. Nigerians have Aliko. Uh, hopefully, Just Pond will be greater than Aliko. Good night. Show TV, insightful and inspiring moments. Has Christianity always been?